Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I'm here to read to you SCP-26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Please leave a like, like um, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down below. SCP-26 After School Retention Item Number 26 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-26 is remaining securely locked and boarded up at all times when there is no research going on. Alarms are set to alert the Foundation in case of entry by civilians or other agencies. Description SCP-26 is a three-story public school building built in blank. It has two wings connected to a central foyer. It was declared condemned in the unknown time. After it was found, the floor plan didn't match up the building's blueprints. See interview log 2601. We'll check that later. Whew. The came to the Foundation's attention after several disappearances in the area were linked to the to visits to the abandoned building. This has been striked, but the building apparently once demonstrated spatial anomalies. Its a total space was much greater than the external surface of the building would allow. Hallways dis display variable length, while staircases have differing number of steps going up or down. The number of rooms Moves out the hallway changes every time they are counted. Attempts to reach far ends of the hallway have met with failures thus far. Entrance to the fire escape is located at the end of the hallways is leads to doors approximately midway down the length of the halls. Edit. See note twenty six A. There is considerable gra of the graffiti on the interior or walls of the school. Most appears typical, including gang signs, names, and street art. However, the graffiti fades and reappears, changing location, writing on chalkboards and bulletin boards changes in a similar fashion. Subjects typically found range from standard school subjects, math, literature, biology, to more esoteric subjects such as quantum entanglement, redacted, and eugenics. One researcher reported one board detailing information about SCP unknown, but photographic evidence showed only a blank slate. See note 026b. The phrase the children used to sing has appeared multiple times in various places throughout the building, but there is currently no explanation for its significance. <sighs> A number of unconscious subjects have been found in the building, mostly of high school age, ranging from 12 to 18. They are dressed in accordance to the school's dress code, circa unknown time. Several have been identified as former students or faculty of the school who disappeared after the school shut down. In at least one case, more than 10 years after the closure, it is currently unknown how they were transported back into SCP-26. See note 26C. All attempts to squeak the subjects while inside the building have failed. On being removed from the grounds onto SCP-26, the subjects wake abruptly. They experience a period of confusion before dying from extremely rapid dehydration, followed by advanced decomp decomposition. No useful intelligence has recovered from the subjects to date. <sighs> the inability to wake subjects extends to those who fall asleep on the grounds of SCP-26. Though the rapid dehydration only seems to affect us who, who have been found on the grounds of the school. See Instant Report 2612. Before we get into these notes and the Instant Report, let's get into the first interview that told us to look at. Interview log 26-1 Agent 
and Smith. Thank you for your time. I'm, I'm Mr. Er, Bob. Bob. Not at all. If there's one thing I, I have plenty of these days, it's time. Agent Smith. So, let's get down to business. You're a principal of Redacted, back in Redacted, is that right? Yes, that's right. What can you tell us about that? Well, you've heard the stories, I'm sure. Folks say it was haunted, I don't know about that, but things did seem strange towards the end. Tell me about them. Let's see, there were the stairs, of course, you've heard about that, right? It would count 15 in coming up and 16 going back down. I'm sure there was a trick to it, like an optical illusion, but I could never figure it out. And we had a history book that turned up completely blank. I suppose that is seemed rather tame, but you know how it is. Little things add up. People tell stories. Tell me about this dreams. The dreams? Oh yes, people were complaining about nightmares. Mostly students, but a few of the staff as well. It was always about school never ending. We joked about it at first, but more people talked about it. I didn't put much credence into it, but well, when we found the blueprints didn't match up with the school, it seemed easier to just move to a new building. The schoolhouse was old anyway, and we were on a fresh start. And just like that, things seemed to sell back to normal. I see. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Hmm. It's not really much, but maybe it'll make a nice footnote on a book you're writing. I still sometimes have dreams about being in my office. Back at the old schoolhouse. Sometimes I'm doing paperwork. Sometimes I'm talking to someone. Sometimes it's always... But it's always behind the desk. Just like old times, but gradually I know something's a bit off. The bell's ringing, but I don't hear anyone in the hallway. No students hurrying in or out of the classroom. No chatter, no footsteps, nothing but the bell. And, and it doesn't stop. And the crazy thing is, uh, I, only, I never noticed that it's a dream until then. I've been retired for 10 years, but until I notice a bell, I think everything's normal. Crazy, isn't it? I think it's very interesting. Thank you very much. If you think of anything else, don't hesitate to give me a call. Anytime. Now let's read these notes and the incident report. Now 26A, robotic exploration and, and video feeds have shown that the apparent spatial anomalies are caused by changes in the perception of observers rather than actual spatial phenomenon. For this reason, SCP-26 does not require the expertise of, of Mobile Task Force Row 8 roadside pickers at this time. Update. Further exploration has, was sh uh, has shown that some spatial phenomena do occur. See the exploration logs for more details. Note 26b. Contents of notepads, books, and pieces of paper have been observed to disappear, only to reappear on surfaces within SCP-26. New writings have appeared, mostly drawn from graffiti or textbooks. Cause should be exercised in bringing documents onto the grounds of, of SCP-26. Now, 26C, several Class C personnel exposed to SCP-26 have disappeared from Foundation control, only to reappear inside the anomalous building. The subjects in questions had previously complained of dreams identical to those experienced by Agent Malik. Update, see Interview Log 2608. Incident Report 2612. During a routine check of SCP-826, Agent Malik was found unconscious by his partner, Agent D Jones, in the main foyer. Initial attempts at rousing Agent Malik were ineffective, so he was moved for transportation and to site blank. Upon leaving the grounds of SCP-26, he woke up abruptly in a state of agitation. When questioned, he revealed that he had been dreaming of a classroom setting. This dream engine consisted throughout all the subjects who had, fall who had fallen asleep within the grounds of SCP-26. So for that exploration log. Whew. 
Expiration log 264. Expiration conducted by Agent Blank. Alright, I'm walking into the lobby. Walls are mostly bare or concrete with a low paint here and there. Graffiti everywhere. A few beer bottles, some other trash. Looks like just another abandoned building. Okay, I'm making my way up the stairs. More graffiti on the walls. Okay, I'm going into the hallway. The peeling paint is kind of creepy. Looks like some sort of sheet fungus. Reminds me of Redacted. The doors are kind of weird. Some are really close, others are far. Really irregular spacing. Doesn't match up with the blueprint you showed me. Okay, here's a classroom. Pretty empty. Some old desks, really old, like they had in the 30s. The chalkboard's got a few math problems on it. Looks like trig. Okay, I'm going to check out another room. Back in the hallway, heading to the next room. Does look more modern in this room. Made from particle board. More posters here. Looks to be from the 80s, I'd say. I recognize some of them from when I was a kid. Looks like a Latin on track awkward. Yes, I'm taking pictures. Okay, back in the hallway, heading to the next room. Several minutes of silence. There's something really screwy with this place. I could swear the room was just a few feet away, but it feels like I've been watching for hours. Anyway, I'm here. We've got sleepers, three of them. Two girls and a boy. They look to be around 14, 15. They're all wearing the same uniform. Yeah, just like you showed me. Hang on a minute while I take some pictures. At least we could figure out who they are. The furniture's is pretty old, old looking. What's left of it? A lot of broken chairs and desks. Nothing on the walls. Chalkboards. The heck? You're not going to believe this, Blank. It's got... Agent Blank's notes up there in her ha handwriting. Ain't even. We're going to have to be really careful what we bring in here. Yeah, I've got pictures, don't worry. Okay, I'm going to check one more room and then I'm out. Back in the hallway now, heading for the next room. Another anomaly. I've been going the same direction the entire time, but I'm back at the stairs. Yeah, I'm just going to head down. I've had enough of this place for one day. I'll meet you at the door. The develop of photos revealed redacted. Exploration log 2612. Carry out remotely using a robotic drone via f video feed. Exploring the first floor hallway. The hallway appeared in poor condition with graffiti on the walls. Comparison with previous videos shows the graffiti has changed. Many of the same signs were present, but in different positions. Some seemed new. Doors were uniformly spaced on the wall. Some were attacked, while others were cracked or missing entirely. First room in the hallway was the girls' bathroom. More graffiti on the walls, several broken mirrors, a toilet had been removed from the wall entirely, and placed in the center of the room. There was a great deal of porcelain and glass on the floor. Next room um, over was a boys' bathroom. This was skipped in favor of exploring the uh, classrooms. The first classroom had no furniture. The chalkboard was broken in two. On one side of the board, there was a set of lines reading, I will not no, pat as notes during class. Sick. The other side had fragments of a lesson on redacted. There was one poster on the wall. Depicting Hel or Keller. No, Helen Keller. I always say that wrong. It's been a while since I actually heard that name. The second classroom was well finished, with the largest number of intact desks to date. Mostly made from wood and steel in a style used in the 1950s. There were two sleepers found that had not been reported in previous sweeps of the building. The first was a male teenager in a student's desk. Comparison with file 2604, revealed 
it would be blank a former student of the school. He was reported missing 10 years after the school closed down at age 28. The other was a woman in her mid 30s sitting behind the teacher's desk. Her identity is still unknown. The trackboard had a timeline of World War II overlaid with an intricate piece of graffiti. The third classroom had 15 particle board desks, as in various states of disrepair. A map on the back wall, always consistent with the social political conditions of 1974. A bookshelf had collapsed and spilled a set of encyclopedias on the floor. The road was then guided to the end of the hallway and back to the entrance. There was no sign of spatial anomalies at this time. <sighs> Exploration Log 2615 Exploration conducted by Agent Smith accompanied by a robotic drone. I'm just going to assume it's the same agent. Okay, I'm in. Lobby looks like it, it always does. Perhaps some graffiti dirt. Some graffiti drift. Here comes the robot. The lobby was compared to previous, pre pre previous videos. Some of the differences in the graffiti are dud, otherwise no significant changes. I'm heading upstairs now. Gosh darn, this robot's heavy. How much stuff did you load on it? You could have warmed me. God, we have a second on the second landing. Are you coming in alright? Cool, cool. First set of stairs was navigated with that level. The second floor hallway appeared similar to the first floor hallway, though with a less debris. I've caught my breath. Heading up to the third floor. Wish there was a guard wheel. Oh, next time it might be easier to carry the robot and the gear separately. And load it in once it's up. The gear's pretty idiot proof. I think I could probably figure it out. Damn thing was a spray over a hundred pounds. They're on the thir third floor now. I count twelve doors. Weird spacing. The last door has got to be at least a hundred yards down. This place is pretty messed up. Rangefinders showed the hallway was approximately 45 meters long, five doors on each side, evenly spaced, with one more door at the end of the hallway. Eleven total. I'm heading in. There's not as much graffiti up here. A bit of debris. I, uh, moving on the doors. Janitor's closet. And hey, we've got a janitor. He's even setting up. That's new. Mel. Seems so he must be in his mid 50s. Name tag says. Uh, Blank. A couple of broomsticks. What's left of a moth? Looks like rats have been in nesting in here. They shredded one of his his pant legs. Looks like they didn't intend to sleep for himself. What you want samples? When we the weirdest thing I picked up for this job. Okay, I think that's it. That's a comparison in what the file was twenty six four. Revealed oh, the sleeper to be Blank. Former janitor earned SCP-26. Their analysis of the refugee is revealed redacted. Recommend future exploration teams wear biohazard gear. Here's a classroom. Um, no, no sleepers. A couple of desks intact. The rest look pretty bad. Looks like someone took a sledgehammer to the place. No, wait, I sound corrected. Baseball bat. It's sitting against the corner. There's about a half case of beer in here. Full cans. Look like looks like they left in a hurry. Hey, get the robot to face the board. There's something I want you to see. Looks like Latin to me. Could be significant. Get someone to translate it. It might be a, tr a clue to what's gone down here. The Latin was found to be a series of sentences showing different conjugations of the verb vendere, to sell. All were found in uh, blank slate's Latin primer, a textbook formerly used by the school. The baseball bat was an illuminant analysis of it. The fingerprints was inconclusive. Okay, next classroom. That is, looks look pretty modern. 80s, I'd guess. Chuck Ward's got a quote from Nicholas 
There's a nickel on it. Yes, I'm sure. It says right there on the board. The sun does not shine upon this fair earth to meet frowning eyes. Depend upon it. Nicholas is Nickleby by Charles Dark by Charles Dickens. There's an app on the desk. Looks fresh. I'm tossing it to the drone. Okay, I'm looking out the window. Hey, are you guys still out there? Because I see kids in the schoolyard. I don't see the van or any of you. Yeah, second classroom on the right. You see me? Weird. The apple appeared fresh on the video feed. However, when the roof from the sample spin, it was in an in it was in an advanced state of decomposition. The drone's feed through the window showed of the foundation van on the ground, and a research team looking up at the window. No children were seen in the schoolyard. Okay, you want me to head down the hallway? All right, let's see if I can if I actually make it this time. Not holding out any hopes. Walking forward, it looks ten feet to the next door, which probably would have put it in the last last room. But who's counting? I'm still here. It's just farther than it looks. Looks like I've been walking at. Feels like I've been walking at least a few hours. I'm almost there. I'm just going to take a breather. I. Okay, this is wrong. I've stopped moving, but now I'm going backwards. The hallway's moving past me. Frick, I just saw the door move past me. I'm moving forward again. That's better. Okay, I'm almost there. One last dash and I should make it. I'm back with the robot. I knew it wasn't going to work. There's no way to get there, I'm telling you. The video feed showed the next door was 30 feet away. To the total lapse of time from one door to the next was 5 minutes, in which time Agent Smith meandered about toward the end of the hallway. No anomalous his activity was observed while he was standing still. But near the end um, of the hallway, Agent Smith turned around and quickly returned to the beginning of the hallway. Okay, I hear you. I've got my eyes closed. I'm walking forward. Left. Got it. Going straight. Correcting left again. Correcting right now. Okay, this is going a lot faster. Okay, correcting right. Yes, right. I heard you. Gosh darn, I'm going right. Okay, left. No, it's not the same direction. Look, if you think that's easy, just send the robot in. The robot was able to reach the end of the hallway with no problems. Agent Smith attempted to follow, but was unable to keep a straight line to the end of the hallway. Just Go ahead and send the button. I'm not going to try again until we have a better idea of what's in there. Something's keeping out of there. We should figure out what it is before anything else. Look, if you want to know that, but Adley, go yourself and or request some class D's. I'm not going in. Deal with it. At this point, the robot reopened the door and crossed the threshold into another or hallway, running perpendicular to the first. 30 meters in length. No doors were visible. A single what in the was observed, but it was situated too high for the view outside to be visible. The walls were free of graffiti. The left was a dead end, while the right remained a terminated left hand turn. Grover turned right and into the next hallway. After 10 meters, the unit chief guest showed it to be outside the a building, but the video feed still showed the hallway. It continued to the end of the hallway and turned left. Agent Smith was just ahead at the beginning of the original hallway, turning the camera behind the wall. The robot showed only the stairwell with no sign of the second hallway. The unit GPS shot by Agent Smith's uh, position. I see another classroom. I don't see the robot though. I lost track after it ran through the door. What do you mean it's outside? Did you go did it go through the window? Look, maybe the chief gets a screw. Calm down. What do you mean turn around? What the heck am I? 
Oh, frick. Okay, that's enough. I'm calling it off for today. We come back after we get some D-class, uh, some class C's in here. That was a long exploration and log. Now, an interview log. Interview log 26-8. Dr. Blank and Agent Walker. Please have a seat. Thank you. Now let's get down to business. I understand you're requesting a transfer out of field work. Would you like to talk about that? I'd rather not. It's your choice. However, I can't approve a transfer without reason. Look, I... The agent paused here. You've seen my... My record. You know I worked on 26, right? I've read the report. I was there the first time we took one to sleep for out. A lot of them were adults when they disappeared, but they're kids again when we find them. So, oh, I see a 16-year-old boy just kind of shriveled away. I had nightmares that night. You're supposed to report any unusual dreams after contacting a potentially mind-altering phenomenon. It hadn't been declared a mind screw yet. We just thought it was a weird space thing. We were just watching it until the uh, picnickers got there. I do not like that word. That sounds very close to a bad word. And it was a shock, you know? We weren't expecting anything like that. Anyway, I got over it quick enough. I've seen worse. I once had a guy melt while I was holding on to him. I see. What happened next? Nothing for a while. I waited a couple of times, but didn't see anything too weird, but... Look, I know I should have reported it, but one of my buddies had just... been disappeared after getting touched by some weird... It would skip, and I don't want it to happen to me. You've been affected by an SCP? I, yeah, it was a week later. I was dozing in the back of the van, and I started dreaming. Can you describe this dream? Just like the other. Was, you've read the reports, right? Pretend that I haven't, for the record, Agent Walker. Alright, I'm in a classroom. It's just like one of the ones in 26, but new. Not falling apart. I knew that she... Eater's name. I knew he was sitting by me, even though I'd never seen Muslim before. The spell, the bell started ringing, but no one moved. I raised my hand, but the teacher didn't notice. Finally, I tried to leave, but the door wasn't open. Then I noticed something strange with my hand. It had a color. Everything else was black and white. I felt like I was the one who was wrong. Out of place? That's when I woke up. The van was leaving. No one else knows I'd been asleep. And you didn't think to report this? Like I said, I was scared. And this was before they found Malik. I figured it was just another nightmare. Nothing in weird. After Malik had his dream, well, they didn't do anything with him, so I figured it wasn't a big deal. He was put on observation. You should have been as well, for your own safety and for the safety of others. You paper pushers think it's all so easy, don't you? Sitting behind a desk all day, you don't know what it's like. But things aren't so clear out here. That when you're the one hunt hunting talking cats in a sewer, or waiting to see if if you're the one who's going to come, who's not going to come back this time. Agent and Walker was visibly distressed. It was several minutes before she calmed down after continuing the interview. Anyway, it wasn't until later that we connected dreams with the sleepers. Not until they found those Class Cs on the second floor. So I thought I might be okay. I wasn't actually inside of 26 when I dreamed. I wasn't sure until the dream started. You're having reoccurrences. Yeah. 
that I started six months ago. It's the same dream, but each time it takes me a little longer to notice it isn't real. And when I look at my hands, they're a little more gray. In interview, 26-8. Note, Agent Walker has since been given a Class A amnestic and returned to field work. Well, that's just not cool. They requested it to be transferred out of field work, and you just force them to continue and just wipe their memories of the stuff that traumatized them. That's not nice. Oh well. The Foundation isn't known for being very kind. Anyway. SCP-27. The Vermin God. Item number, SCP-27, Object Class, Euclid. The host of SCP-27, currently Subject 27-2, and two, is a kept in a 5 meter by 5 meter, or, or by 5 meter containment cell with a grid raised floor, thanks to a strong vacuum system. All creatures removed from the resource containment cell are to be incinerated, except for a small proportion to the be diverted for analysis and, and necropsy. The cell has been cleaned and expected for or structural damage daily. SCP-27 and I mean, Subject-27-2, I'm going to start calling them Mike. Mike must be monitored by at least two percent at all times. Any individual's all behavior or vital signs on a part of, the, of Mike or the appearance of any unusual species in the subject's vicinity must immediately be reported to level per, four personnel. Security per personnel assigned to SCP-27 must be inoculated against all known animal-borne pathogens and must be armed with tranquilizer guns with standing orders to subdue the subject if the need arises. Until SCP-27 is better understood, no personnel of level 4 clearance or higher should approach within 200 meters of Mike. SCP-27 appears to be a phenomenon of unknown sources that seems to be tied to one unhuman subject, currently Mike, at a time. As a host of SCP-27, Mike is constantly surrounded by swarming vermin that are drawn to his lo location. A subject does not appear to assert control over these creatures in any way, and is in fact prone to occasional attacks from feral specimens. These creatures have been known to attack personnel who approach too closely. Whenever the subject goes, wherever the subject goes, an initial floor, swarm of flying insects such as gnats and flies will start to form a cloud around them, usually within two or two to three meters. Shortly thereafter, crawling animals, including lice, cockroaches, worms, spiders, they expunge mice and rats will begin to appear. The longer the subject remains in the location, the more vermin and will gather there. When the subject leaves the location, some of these creatures will follow, will follow, but most will disperse. SCP-27 has been known to transfer between host runs. Upon the death of the first known host, Bob, see if is one for more information, Since SCP-27 could likely repeat this feat upon the death of Mike, all, by, all hot, I value the personnel should be kept far away from the current host until more about SCP-27 is understood. SCP-27 has also likely transferred between hosts an unnumber of, an unknown number of times before containment. Research into potential previous hosts has commenced with preliminary evidence suggesting that 27 may have existed for at least blank years. It is not unknown how SCP-27 chooses or attracts animals, or even what SCP-27 exactly is. The previous hosts never expressed having any sort of communications with a separate conscious entity. Analysis of the current host has been inconclusive at best. Appendix 1 Subject when he's, he's, I mean, Bob is discovered in a, in a warehouse. 
outside blank that had been completely overrun by rats, cockroaches, and other vermin, and is contained in catalog as SCP-27. It sometimes described as a Caucasian male in his late thirties of average height, but gaunt, filthy, yet covered in bites and scratches. Sometimes also shows sometimes of degraded mental health, evidence of heavy use of alcohol and illicit drugs, and signs of prolonged sleep deprivation. Oh yeah. October unknown, two thousand something. Subject expires. A top seat shows more than seventy percent of the subject's body. A colony of rats lusting in the subject's abdomen for at least blank generations. October blank, 2000 blank. Between 140 and 150 hours after the subject's death, security office, or sir, I'm going to call him Bob, reports being awakened by breathing problems due to a large, arch house fly having crawled up his nose. Lair showed to have laid eggs. Subsequent observations lead to categorization of Officer Bob as subject 27 to. The original house has been reclassified as Subject 27-1, and SCP-27 is redefined. Data expunged. Appendix 2. Transcript of SCP-27-201. The following interview was uh, conducted on October blank, 2000 blank, shortly after Subject 27-2 was identified and such a container tell that at once house was Bob. Good morning, Mike. How are you feeling? Scared? Confused? Mostly scared, though. Understandable. And itchy. I feel like I need to shower all the damn time. Hmm. <sighs> Ah, uh, but what about, um, inside? Do you feel anything different inside you? Like a presence? No, I don't think I do. I haven't really noticed anything like that. You still haven't felt anything since the, or since the original host died, besides the itching? No? I can't say I have. How about any sort of voices or compulsions? No, I haven't felt anything except bugs crawling all over me. I feel dirty and scared and dark. What about my family? You gotta get this thing out of me so I can see them again. Uh, of course, we're going to do everything we can to get this, to get at 20. And he said, out of you. Gosh. I... I'm sorry, hey Mike. Shortly after this interview took place, Dr. J. Emerson and several other members of the research team for SCP-27 were transferred to OSCP-1772 project. We'll learn about that later. Onward to 28, which is only known as knowledge. I don't know what this is. Item number SCP-28. Containing procedures. No special means I need to contain it at this time, as SCP-28 has not shown any changes in size, position, or shape during the entire period of its containment. But access must be restricted. Currently, SCP-28 is contained on, on site blank as SCP-28 is not transportable by any known means. SCP-28 is sealed in a 6 by 6 by 3 meter 
concrete room with a single door, with two armed personnel issued outside. Only authorized personnel are, are to be allowed with are to be allowed exposure to SCP-28. An extreme must be taken and an extreme care must be taken at all times while SCP-28 itself is hard unless the effect can be very damaging to the unprepared. See document EL281125. Guess we'll see. Description SCP-28 is a band is located in an abandoned storage yard outside Ed Carver Mill in uh, northern Michigan. SC-28 has no detectable presence of any kind, but its effect occurs in a 2.1 meter cube around on what is commonly not held as the center of SCP-28. <sighs> All forms of scanning and testing in the area of SCP-28 have shown no or abnormal readings. Adding or removing objects or attempting to remove dirt from under SCP-28 has no effect in altering the size or shape of SCP-28's area of effect, not or the answer of quality of the effect. Subjects entering SCP-28 are within 3 to 6 seconds struck by total and complete knowledge of a subject. The knowledge is thus far completely random in both size and usefulness, and sometimes goes unnoticed for extended periods of not of time. Most profound knowledge generally has a stronger effect, but in some cases, expunge. See document twenty eight eleven twenty five. This effect can be experienced in multiple times by exiting exiting and entering SCP twenty eight but can result in increasingly strong migraines and dizziness after two ex exposures. SCP-28 came to the Foundation's attention after research into news reports of a local miner who, designed a who submitted a design for a cold fusion reactor to the U.S. Patent Office. Mr. Blank recorded that it just came to me like a bolt out of the blue. News and subjects were suppressed and contained after discovery of SCP-28, and the reactor designs implemented a containment of, uh, of SCP-1995. Subsequent testing of SCP-28 has yielded mixed results. <sighs> Partial Information in retrieval log for January 5th blank. Note, all knowledge is perfect, total, and eidetic. Every phone book, book entry for New York City in 1998, how to redesign the internal combustion engine to run on human blood using only existing parts. Note, for redesign it takes four hours and runs at higher efficiency than gasoline. Locations of keys for blacklist avre. The proper method of care for a mole rat colony. Origin and history of 12 SCP objects. Note the main in expunged. Family history of the Blackthorn on family located in London, England. Geological structure of the Earth beneath Greenland, including several unknown caves and expunged. Document number EL28 is 1125 log. E112. Subject, D-1182, exposed to SCP-28. So I began to cry and went into feral position, showing signs of high distress. Unresponsive to crushing outside similes and similes for several days. Lapsed into cat cataconic state after saying that this is not life. Subject passed into a coma and died shortly after. 
Cause of death was attributed to shock. E-127. Agent in blank. Accidentally exposed to the SV-28. Agent showed old signs of sudden surprise and amusement. When questioned, agents and requested a moment to gather my thoughts, please. After several seconds, agent left, shook his head, and removed the service pistol from its hold. Oh, sir. Agent then shot and wounded Dr. Blank and killed agents blank and blank before being restrained. Post incident interrogation and revealed that agent blank had extensive knowledge of foundation of classified foundation activities and several sub SCP objects he had not been exposed to, including SCP-2669. Document EL-281128 Log Experiment 189 Subject D-9843 was exposed to SCP-28 Examination of a subject revealed abnormal respiratory actions. Question revealed that subject had learned to recycle the carbon dioxide inside his body. Repeated attempts to teach skill to other D class personnel failed. Subject terminated. Autopsy revealed no abnormal or organ formations. Research notes. Dr. Blank. Seriously, how the heck did he do that? Looks like you get random um, knowledge, but you get absolute knowledge of whatever is going on. Which is really odd. Anyway. SCP-29 Daughter of Shadows <sighs> This might be bad Item number SCP-29 Object Class Keter SV-29 is being incarcerated in a Class 5 containment cell. She is to be allowed access to nothing of physical nature. Her containment cell is to be placed behind a triple airlock to avoid her escape. As of instant in 2934A, SV-29 is no longer to be fed as she does not appear to need sustenance to survive. There are to be three guards on duty at all times on her cell and two guards on monitor duty. The floodlights have been inside the walls of the containment chamber and, and are to be on at all times. Once a month, the chamber is to be cleaned and checked for defects. Under absolutely no circumstances are any men to encounter SCP-29 in any manner. Any males who do encounter SCP-29 are to be held under Class 3 detention for interviewing t before or termination. SCP-29 has requested a bed, denied, a blanket, denied, books, denied, clothes, denied. This is ridiculous. The girl can't even have clothes? Dr. Erica Bodine. Dr. Or Bodine, you are granted permission to deliver her clothes to SCP-29. Dr. Light. As of incident 2953B, anyone who has attempted access to SCP-29 is required to first watch surveillance tape of 29 Bodine as a reminder of threats involved when working with SCP items and SCP-29 in particular. Description SCP 29 appears to be a pubescent female of 
Asiatic Indian descent. I do not know how to say those words. She appears to suffer from alopecia of Versalis. Over 80% of her pigmentation is a true black, while the rest of her skin has a complete lack of melanin, to the point of, of albinism. Her eyes are also a dark black uh, in color. S629 has severe her homicidal tendencies and has displayed a remarkable ability to use any item as a weapon. However, she has a severe compulsion against shedding blood, preferring instead to strangle her victims. SB29 has, has demonstrated dexterity and physical overreactions, and it's four times as fast as the average human. SB29 has displayed has displayed extensive resistance to damage of all forms. Both of these extra uh, human abilities were greatly hampered in the presences of bright or direct light, natural or artificial. In addition, any males who come within the presence of SV-29, an area of her current perception, find themselves built to her will. Such males become willing to kill or even die for SV-29. <sighs> SV-29 refers to her as Blank, which roughly translates to Daughter of Darkness, Daughter of Shadows, or Daughter of Night. Interviews with SV-29 have been proven have proven difficult to conduct due to SV-29's constant attempts to kill or convert all who speak with her over her years of captivity. The black patches on her skin in have increased in size. SV-29 was first brought to the Foundation his attention by an agent working in rural India. An attempt on, on his life led him to a small kilt of a man who claimed to be a thuggies in service to the daughter. Several weeks of investigation proved that they believed the world to be in fact the last years of Kali Yuga. And that by sacrificing one woman's life to the daughter of Doc they could raise their gods and end the world. They also believe the at only sacrifice performed through strangulation adds to this tally. Events led the agents into the matter in Fortress, where he discovered SCP-29. After the loss of said agent, that expunged was expanded in our acquisition of SCP-29. Addendum. Seven years after capture, SV-29 began showing anomalous growth in her, her black pigmentation. But question of that, she claimed her followers were on the move once more. Investigation led to a concentration of so-called thuggies that escaped our initial foray. After discovering that all her followers were... What the heck? Oh, for one of their holidays, a tactical airstrike was called in when the first bomb dropped. SC-29 awoke from slumber, screaming at the top of her lungs. SC-29 continued to scream for the next four hours, ranting and raving that we were killing her people. Since said event, the growth on of black pigmentation had stopped completely. Also said and said event, SCP-29 has redoubled her efforts to escape. SCP-2820 has been proposed as a possible method of neutralization should the situation worsen. And last, we have the homunculus. Item number SCP-30, Object Class Safe. SCP-30 is to be held at Site 17 within a modified humanoid containment cell. Minor adaptations to accommodate its structure, such as an appropriately scaled workplace, workspace and chair, are to be included. 
laying within the cell may be altered upon request of SP32 a maximum of 2000 in lumen to be a simple dimmer switch. Should the you need to render SP830 inert array stuff may extinguish the light from the exterior your switch and draw blackout curtains as necessary. Certain night vision equipment is, is available for observation of SCP-30 in its inert state. SCP-30 may request personnel for may request materials for personnel of research every 90 days. Obviously, requested materials are to be collected and destroyed prior to the delivery of new materials. All materials are to be evaluated and screened by both the research and security staff. SCP-30 is to be denied access to any modern scientific journals or texts. And fiction is to be restricted to works produced no later than 1623 CE to reserve the integrity of its innate knowledge. Staff wishing to consult with SV30 in writing are to place a formal request, document number 30 RSV, with the supervision ISO researcher on duty. All correspondence is to be retained. Staff wishing to consult with SV30 in person are to submit a formal request to site management document SP30 ARPA 17 in 03 slash A. At least 30 days to their preferred consultation date. All consultations are to be recorded and retained. Senior research staff may request SP30 to be temporarily removed from its container for a maximum of one hour to provide observed. Observation insight into non restricted materials or events within Site 17. Under no circumstances is SCP 30 be to leave the confines of, of Site 17. Requests must be presented in person to Site Management and Security staff at least 30 days prior to preferred observational release date. All observational release events are recorded and retained. SV30 has been equipped with a tracking device. Inventory control code of number 03017-1. So its location within site I-17 may be determined and precisely at any time. How <sighs> long is this going to take? Oh, jeez. SCP-30 appears as a hairless, genderless, gray-toned human, 71 centimeters or 28 inches in height, and weighing 12.70 kilograms. Its solid blue eyes lack these discernible irises or purples, and resemble small cut sapphires. SCP-30 possesses an androgynous voice with a pronounced English accent, not currently identified as specific to any modern region, it is able to converse, read, and write in ancient Greek, Latin, Italian, English, Spanish, and Portuguese, as well as two additional languages that have not been identified despite SCP-30's insistence that they should be common knowledge. SCP-30 has also demonstrated knowledge of physics, chemistry, astronomy, in mathematics, horticulture, roughly equivalent to that of a 17th century CE academic. In addition, SCP-30 has demonstrated knowledge on these topics along research lines that do not appear in a historical record. Those alternative or alternative or completely unknown approaches to research in the natural sciences are one source of SCP-30's utility in consultation. SCP-30 remains active while a 15 lumen in source of light or grayer is within. Five, five meters in the absence within 1.5 meters. I could not read for a minute. I am really getting tired. The absence of light. In the absence of light, SCP-30 becomes inert, apparently losing consciousness and showing no outward signs of life. Within 5-10 seconds after being exposed to light, SCP-30 becomes active once more, appearing to come out of a light slumber no matter how long the period of inactivity has been. 
SP30 does not require does not appear to requ require these periods of inactivity as a human in order to require sleep and has expressed a desire to remain active as often as possible. Biopsy analysis of SCP-30 remains inconclusive. While Clay is native to the English county, east of Kent, Surrey, and Great Lander make up the majority of its surface traces of mandrake lie, mercury and human blood have been found in each sample taken. SP-30 has expressed a full exploratory search due to determine its working exploit potentially and its existence. Samples removed from SP-30 do not re regenerate and sampling is currently discontinued to preserve its integrity. Also, SP-30 can be damaged. It does not appear to feel pain and will simply remold with any portion of its anatomy that experiences deformation. Notably, SP-30 cannot be molded directly by human hands. Though any number of tools may be used to alter its surface, SV-30 does not respirate, requires no sustenance, and produces no waste. Although it does infrequently request a bath. SV-30 refers to its themselves as Ariel, and regularly re requests that its staff do the same. Questions regarding how Ariel was created by whom are routinely answered with the seemingly road statement, I have been asked to forget that bit of information. Terribly sorry. Ariel delivers his response in the same tone and cadence each time they any question regarding its origin or creator are presented, giving their composition and lack of origin a Link to the Alchemist of Algada. Oh, is suspected. Ariel was discovered on June twelfth in a weird year during a mandatory archaeo archaeological survey within London's in Smart Lake District, the construction of a car park. It was buried beneath two point seven meters below straight yield level, contained in a small stone sarcophagus. The sarcophagus bore no uh, markings and was assumed to be that of, an, of a deceased infant as additional graves and discovered in the, new, in the survey area. The sarcophagus lid was shattered in the ex, 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 excavation exposing SV-30 to daylight. Upon being struck by the sun's ray, is SV-30 roused from its inert state to one of mild activity within a few seconds, saying good afternoon to the assembled construction team. A member of the Foundation's Greater London and, and a recon force was summoned within hours and uh, took the specimen into custody without resistance. The limited number of witnesses were given a six and release. Addendum 1 hmm. Oh, okay. Document 30C, Security Logs for SCP-30. Whew. September 14th of an unknown year, tracking system installed for SV-30. December 21st of an unknown year, SV-30 reports malfunction of its own tracking system. Repairs completed within six hours. SV-30 offers to assist but is refused for security purposes. March 13th, unknown year, SV-30 completes 18-week seminar on unknown language Alpha, Zephyr, and Five staff researchers said fluent. Lexicographic is transmitted to O5 blank. July 2nd, unknown year. While in consultation, research blank inadvertently makes several remarks regarding uh, photobiotic technology. Consultation and before the research can substantially, substantively elaborate. 
elaborate. August 12th, SCP-30 requests a supply of magnesium and indicates that it intends to ignite samples to study the life produced. Request denied by researchers. November 14th, Incident 31, using only what appears to be standard red pine soil, ginger, a 72 gram um, sample of root layer quartz, and a 23 centimeter length of old copper wires, SP30 produces an object capable of emitting novel levels of directed and ultraviolet light through unknown means. The device is confiscated. Effects not are currently replicable without direct enrichment from SCP 30. Researchers are currently in conversation and to determine if this line of SP-30's research will be permitted to continue. It is speculated SP-30 may be working towards an alternative and possibly anomalous manifestation of the photoelectric effect after receiving only minimal information regarding its existence. All research by SP-30 is suspended and, and materials removed pending review. <sighs> I think this is probably the longest one yet. This has been SCP 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like icon on the video and leave a comment down below. And please subscribe to the channel. I would really like you to start asking me questions in the comments. I'll see you next time.